Hey former Christchurch family, I'm so excited for today's sermon because today we'll be addressing a very, very controversial topic and that is whether or not Christians should be involved in politics and if they should, how should this go for Christians? So the reason why I'm making this sermon today and preaching about this topic today is because yesterday something very big happened in US politics and that is that there was an attempted assassination on Donald Trump and my twin brother and I made a video about this and in that video we basically just state that as Christians we should always seek peace and that violence is never the answer so whether you agree with Donald Trump or don't agree with him or any politician for that matter what you do and what you say should always reflect the fact that God uh, tells us to be peacemakers in the world and that received a lot of hate from people saying that, you know, uh, we as Christians should stay away from politics. We should not even uh, be in politics at all. So that's why I want to make this sermon today and preach about this topic today. So firstly, many people say that we should stay away from our politics because we were born in South Africa. And uh, this is just a very ridiculous idea because just because you're born in a certain country doesn't mean that you are blind to what's happening to other countries. For example, I'm now in Mexico. My twin brother's wife is uh, Mexican and from the US. So uh, that's just a little bit of background. But other than that, when you look at what is happening in the world, for example, you say that as Christians, you can't have a topic or an opinion of what's happening in Nazi Germany and saying that is evil because you're not born in Germany so you can't say Hitler is evil or have an opinion on what's happening in uh, Gaza with Hamas and Israel because you were not born there. It doesn't make any sense. Obviously you will have opinions on what is right and what is wrong whether it's happening in your country or a different country. So <clears throat> without waiting any longer let's get into the Bible for today and uh, the main passage is 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 through to 2 it says First of all then I urge that supplications, prayer, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. So here we see something very important, and that, and that is that we should pray for leaders. We should pray for them to live in a godly way, and want to serve God because if they serve God then the entire country lives in peace because then we have biblical principles and godly principles reigning in our lives for example when we look at topics of discussion for today we see our, our things that uh, matter in the political space affect our personal space as well for example marriage that creeps into what the Bible says because the Bible defines what marriage is now we have the government saying what marriage is and what it shouldn't be as well so the people that you vote for in a democratic country matter because they use biblical topics and then they want to switch it around into something that the government can define and that is also seen in life for example with abortion God said that he is the author of life and death. He is the one who knits people together in their mother's womb. And now you have the government saying that you can kill babies in the womb. And you even see how John the Baptist, when he was still in Elizabeth's womb, he leapt for joy when uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, came and Jesus was already in the womb of Mary. So there we see the life and the joy that there can be in the womb, yet many people are now saying that the government can have the right to take away a human life. And that's why it's so important for our voices as Christians to be heard, because who we vote for in a democratic country matter, because at the end of the day, they are then either taking those biblical principles and corrupting them, or they can advance what the Bible says that we should do in the political space. And then we also see in Psalm 33 verse 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. So here we see that a country that is ruled by God is a blessed nation by God. Now, I don't believe in the prosperity gospel because, for example, the Apostle Paul and all the other disciples, they struggled for their faith. Uh, they went through difficult times for their faith. They went through persecution and suffering because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And nothing was wrong with their faith. They believed are uh, even stronger than most Christians. Their faith was even stronger than most Christians, yet they suffered persecution. But when it comes to nations, we see how nations are blessed by God 
when they obey the word of God, when they are faithful to God, a nation will be blessed. And we see, for example, when kings and rulers fell short to Israel's time, then the entire people would be either blessed or cursed based on the principles of the ruler. So if the rulers were unfaithful to God, the nation of Israel would be cursed and they were sent into exile. So here we see how an entire nation was either blessed or was sent into exile or went to hardships because of the faith of rulers. And that is why it's so important for us as Christians who are in a de uh, democratic country to make sure that our voices are heard. Now, when we uh, saw what happened to Donald Trump after he was shot in the ear, we saw him standing up and saying, fight, fight, fight. Now, this is something that I actually agree with. We should fight as believers for the gospel. We should contend for our faith in all aspects of our lives and that includes the political sphere but we should remember that our fight should be done with love and peace in mind we should never fight with violence but our fight should be one of a holy war understanding that there is a spiritual warfare and we are fighting for the goodness of a nation and for the holiness of a nation and to make our nation blessed and that counts for south africa as well there was a lot of uproar because the government supported gaza in uh, the Palestine versus Israel war or the uh, Gaza and Israel war and that was something that was very shocking for a lot of Christians here in South Africa because the Bible makes it very clear that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem and that Israel is still a chosen nation by, uh, by God. So we as a nation are unfortunately judged by what our rulers do but the prayers of the faithful in the nation are not unheard of by God. God hears our prayers and He listens to our prayers. That's the great thing about this new covenant that we are now living in is that we now have direct access to God. We have direct access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and we need to capital of the Lord of Lords and we need to capitalize on that relationship that we can have with God. Uh, and then we also see this in 2 Timothy 2 verse 24 through to 25. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. So here we see how if we oppose someone and we have differing um, political views and opinions to someone else, then it's important and crucial for us to always remember that we should uh, always speak the truth in love. Because if we just speak the truth and preach the truth, then we will come off as arrogant if there is no love. But if we only preach love and acceptance and tolerance, then we will not have any truth at all. No biblical fact. Um, we won't even use the Bible because we will be too afraid of hurting people's feelings. But the truth is the gospel is one of conviction, which is why we first repent because we realize that we are sinners and then we put our faith in Jesus. So we need to preach the truth in love because if you just preach truth you'll be arrogant if you just preach love you will not say anything that is biblical and you will be nothing more than a hippie but if you preach the truth in love that is when you can make a difference that is when you can preach what you want to preach the truth of the gospel the truth of what the bible says with the convicting spirit that people will feel because they understand the love that you have for them and the concern that you have for them, that you are doing this because you want the best for them and that you want the best for the nation. And the final verse I want to conclude with is from 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. It says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discern so here we see something very very important and that is that we cannot expect non-believers and non-christians to have the same moral standards of us because they don't have the holy spirit within them so when we preach the truth about what we believe whether it's on the topic of abortion gay marriage all of these things we should have some element of understanding behind our conversation with these people understanding that they are not yet christians meaning that their lives and their foundation of their lives are not the word of god and is not god living inside of them and convicting them of things of their sins so of course they will differ with you on those topics because they don't have the spirit of god within them so it's important for us to also as we go out to this world and preach 
what we want to preach about biblical truth when it comes to politics, we also need to preach the gospel first. Because if we preach the gospel first, if we put the word of God first and help them to come to Christ first, and that is the first priority, then God will transform them and use them and mold them in a way that they will also understand why our opinions or our thoughts and our convictions on abortion, same-sex marriage, all of those stuff are the way that it is. It is because God is convicting us and we have the word of God as our foundation, which they don't have yet. For example, I heard Ricky Gervais say uh, that you can't argue that the, the baby in the womb is not something that will be a living being. It's not something that is not yet actually like a baby because to say it's just a clump of cells is very ignorant because we all know what it will be in nine months. But he simply doesn't care. If someone wants to kill the baby in the womb, he doesn't care. And that's because he's an atheist. Of course, his moral compass wouldn't be the same as a Christian. We put value on life. We put value on human life. Understanding that God is the author of life and death. Because we are Christians. We have that moral standard and they don't. So, important, so it's important for us to understand that when we preach the gospel and when we want to share biblical truth and are in the realms of politic, our politics, then we first need to go out into this world and preach the gospel and then from there we can also uh, help people to easily and more easily understand our political views but in terms of us as christians we should always seek to be a light in every aspect of our lives in every aspect of society we should be a light in this dark world and that's the great thing also about living in a democratic country is that your voice matters you have a vote meaning that when you go out and vote you can go out and vote for someone who actually stands firm on the Bible. And I understand that no politician will always stand firm on the Bible because there is a lot of uh, people who are kind of moving away from the Bible and compromising on the Bible. However, it's important for us to understand that when we go to vote, we should always vote with our faith in mind. Who will represent us as Christians best? Who is the closest to the Bible that we have? At the moment and if you have this uh, if you have this and you have this mindset when you go out and vote then you will never never fall short of being a godly Christian in the political sphere God bless